Hello and welcome to this video. This is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry at Georgia Southern University. This is the first in a series of three videos about calorimetry. So in this video, specifically, I'm going to talk about general, the general ideas behind quantifying amounts of heat that are transferred. Discussion of quantifying amounts of heat that are transferred. And actually, we're going to learn that there's two brands or two versions of heat capacity. So we're going to learn about them, specific heat capacity and molar heat capacity. And actually, in this video, we're actually going to learn how to convert between specific and molar heat capacities. All right, and then finally, we'll do a couple, solve a couple of example problems that use this uh, equation. Okay, here we are. Let's transfer some heat. Actually, in, the, in this specific example, let's talk about transferring heat from the flame of a Bunsen burner to some water. And we'll ask ourselves, in some you know, sort of unit of time or you know, some interval of time in which we're heating the water like this, how much energy is uh, transferred to the water? Well, that amount of energy we'll call Q. And Q depends on three things. The amount of heat that transfers proportional to the amount of the substance whose temperature is being changed. So here the amount might be measured as the mass of water inside the beaker. In this discussion, let's ignore the beaker for the time being. We'll just focus on the water. This would be the amount of water. Well, heat capacity is a property of the substance. It's the amount of energy required to change the temperature of the substance by a unit degree. And the third factor is the temperature change itself. So we can talk a little bit about these factors. Imagine we're heating up, say, one gram of water. And because it's water, it's got a heat capacity that's associated with water. And say, let's heat up that one gram of water by one degree Celsius. But then, let's repeat the experiment, and actually let's heat up two grams of water by one degree Celsius. So it's twice the amount of water by the same temperature change. Well in that case, because the heat transferred is directly proportional to the amount, when you use two grams instead of one gram, it would just be twice the amount of heat. And as and you can see, well let's imagine going back to having one gram of water. So in the first experiment, increasing the temperature by one degree Celsius. That takes a certain amount of heat. And then in the second experiment, we'll take the exact same amount of water, one gram. The capacity will be the same because it's the same substance, water. But now, instead of heating up by one degree Celsius, let's heat it up by 10 degrees Celsius. The amount of heat that transfers, or that is required to change the temperature of the substance, that amount, just scales proportionately. If the temperature change was 10 times greater, the total amount of heat would just be 10 times greater. So there's these three factors. The amount of material that you're changing the temperature of can be described in terms of the mass of that material or the number of moles. Of that. If you specify the amount of material in terms of the mass of that material, then you have to use what's called the specific heat capacity. And conversely, if you're using moles to say how much material is there, you have to use something called the molar heat capacity. So here's our first introduction to the ideas that there's a specific heat capacity and a molar heat capacity. The amount can be mass or moles. The heat capacity can will then be specified in others. Specific heat capacity or molar heat capacity. The temperature change is always going to be reported in either degrees Celsius or Kelvin. Kelvin does not have a degree sign, so one degree Celsius is exactly the same temperature change as one Kelvin. So now let's say more about what's meant by the specific heat capacity. So here this, here's the statement that describes what specific heat capacity is. The amount of energy that must flow to raise the temperature of one gram exactly of substance by exactly one degree Celsius, or equivalently one Kelvin. Okay, so here's a diagram that sort of illustrates that. So sort of schematically, you have one gram of water at some initial temperature. Say it's 14.5 degrees. You raise this temperature by one degree Celsius. So if it was 14.5 initially, we've raised it up to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Experimentally, if we do this, we find that to raise one gram of water in the liquid state by one degree Celsius, 
it takes 4.184 joules of heat. And in equation form, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have this equation that we described on the last slide that the heat transferred is equal to the product of the mass, the specific heat capacity, and the change in temperature. Well, we just algebraically rearrange that a little bit to solve for the specific heat capacity. Won't it be fun now to plug in these values? So for Q, we'll put in this 4.184 joules. And then for the mass, we'll put in 1.000 grams. Change in temperature, 1.000 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you know, who needs to write one a bunch of times? We'll just uh, compress that down to 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Now, since a degree Celsius, like we said, is exactly the same as a Kelvin, you know, you could just as easily write that 4.184 joules per gram per Kelvin. 4.184 joules is said to be the specific heat capacity of water. Okay, solve a problem. And in this problem, we're asked, to, we're asked how much energy in kilojoules is needed to raise the temperature of 250 grams of water from 22 Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius. I expect you to think about this problem, perhaps even put this video on pause and work on this problem. Okay, so to solve this, you know, we're quantifying the amount of energy that uh, is transferring to raise the the uh, temperature of, uh, or change the temperature of an object. So we're going to use this equation. We don't have to rearrange this because in this question we're just solving for Q. Okay, so for mass we're going to substitute 250 grams. For the specific heat capacity we'll stick this in 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And for the change in temperature we're just going to subtract the initial temperature from the final temperature. So if you take 98 minus 22 you'll get 76. Multiply those three together Okay, and you'll see that grams will cancel and uh, degrees Celsius will cancel, leaving us with joules. So this is 7.9 times 10 to the fourth joules. Well, this question asks us to report this in kilojoules. So basically, I'll, I'll just use the conversion factor between kilojoules and joules and change that to 79 kilojoules. Okay, heat capacity conversion, second problem. We're asked to find the molar heat capacity of water. Well, I guess you could look it up somewhere in a book or maybe have, perhaps find a trustworthy internet site, but actually what you can do is you can convert from the specific heat capacity to the molar heat capacity. Okay, so the specific heat capacity, 4.184 joules per gram, here we'll say per Kelvin, okay? But if we're going to convert a specific heat capacity to a molar heat capacity, actually you just have a grams to moles conversion. And if this is for this material water, you have this equality that we're one mole of this, that stuff is, is the same as 18.02 grams of that stuff. Well, that's a statement of equality that turns into a conversion factor. We'll put 18.02 grams on top. So grams will cancel out. And when we multiply those two numbers, we'll just have some answer with joules on the top and grams, oops, that should be moles on the bottom. We're dealing with aluminum and we're given its uh, specific heat capacity and now we're told that we have some sample of aluminum, okay, it absorbs this much heat and it undergoes some temperature change from 23.2 degrees Celsius to 30.5 and we're asked in this question to find the mass of the sample. This formula you know, it's used to quantify the amount of heat. So rearrange this. In this case, we want to find mass. So we'll just rearrange this to solve for mass. Okay, so for Q, we're going to put in this 9.86. For the specific heat capacity, we're going to put in this 0 0.90 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And for delta T, actually, I'll put it explicitly here, 30.5 minus 23.2 degrees Celsius. And so that is 1.5 grams. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for learning. And if this has uh, helped you and if you've learned something, well then, high five. This has been Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry of Georgia Southern University.